Uh, hey guys, it's Chris from Ocean Pro uh, back here again today talking about the accessory engine stop and start switch that is used with some applications of the revolver throttle like the GSXR Suzuki models. When you are installing the switch onto a motorcycle, it, the, you have to wire the switch to fit into the stock harness. What that generally means is disassembling the stock connector off of the stock switch and then assembling that connector onto the aftermarket Motion Pro switch so that it will function with the stock harness. This is the simplest, safest, and most secure way of installing this switch onto your motorcycle. Installing a switch and doing these modifications is somewhat complex and is also very important from a safety standpoint. If you make a mistake or there is a, an, an assembly problem with your work, you could potentially cause your bike to shut off while you're riding it and cause all sorts of potential problems. So if you're not 100% sure that you can do this job from start to finish, 100%, always seek out the assistance of an experienced professional technician to make sure the job is done right the first time. The tools that we're going to use for this assembly are relatively straightforward. There's not a whole lot of complex stuff that you need. Uh, in determining the function of your stock switch, you need to have a multimeter and know how to use it in a ohm setting so that you can check continuity and, and discontinuity. You'll need some tools to disassemble the stock connectors. The, a pick or a very small screwdriver. The stock connectors have a small tab that hold the terminals in place and so you need to get in there to release the tab. Uh, small cutters to cut the uh, connector off of the new switch and then a pair of crimping pliers to attach the new terminals onto the new accessory switch. One other thing that you're gonna need here that it, we don't have right in front of us is a piece of paper and a pen because you're gonna need to draw a drawing that illustrates where all of the stock wires are in their stock positions and what those wires do so that you can keep track. If you don't know that, then you will have a problem later and you won't know how to reassemble. So make sure that you always make a lot of notes with the uh, disassembly of the switch so that you can know where you're at at all times. The first step is always to determine the position of the wires in the stock switch and to determine what those wires do. So it's always easiest to make a drawing from the back side of the switch. I use the little clip as an indicator of position and we have eight wires seven one empty spot so orange red what is that one black and blue empty space black red, yellow, white. The two colors that I'm talking about are the main color of the wire and then the stripe color. So yellow, green, orange and white, and orange and black. So now in case something goes wrong, we know how to, at the very least, put the stock switch back together. Smart. Sometimes you can see all of the wires from inside the switch without having to disassemble it, but sometimes you have to pull parts of the switch apart to be able to see the wires. Just keep track of all of the parts that you take out and oh. 
what is being stubborn. Never force anything. Always take your time to look at stuff. There we go. The start stop switch is orange and white and orange and black. And so these two here are the start stop. Now, something that also makes this really easy because the switch has incorporated into it the brake light wires. Now the brake light wires on a track bike like what we're installing today aren't used. Don't have a brake light on the track bike. So we don't have to worry about these so we can eliminate them from our drawing right away. So we've got black and blue and black and red. So we can get rid of that one and we can get rid of that one and that's one less thing that we have to worry about. Now that you can see the start and stop switch, I see that there is an orange and white wire here also, same as the on and off switch. Because these switches are simply continuity switches, they're closed or open, the orange and white is most likely a common wire between the two, so that we have a single orange and white wire here, and then two here where it splits somewhere inside. We can test that with our multimeter I set it just to beep when it has continuity so I don't have to bother looking at the display. So here's the start switch. Yep. And here is the on and off switch. Yep, they're common. So we can file that away for later. The starter switch is a little more complex where it has one side that's, when the switch is at rest, one side that's normally closed which controls the headlights and one side that's normally open which controls the starter. So when the switch is not pushed in, your headlights are on and your starter is not running. So the headlights are closed, starter is open. When you push the switch in, the headlight side goes open, so the headlights turn off, the starter side closes so that the starter starts. That's how this works and that's why your headlight goes off when you start your motorcycle. Now since this is a track motorcycle, the only thing that we have to worry about, because there's no headlight on here, the only thing we have to worry about is the starter circuit itself. So with the starter circuit, all we have to worry about is two wires, the orange and white, and the yellow and green to control the starter on our track motorcycle and the two wires for the start-stop switch. So we have just four wires for this particular track bike. If you're installing this in a street motorcycle because the aftermarket switch only has two wires for the starter switch, uh, it would leave your headlight on if you were starting your motorcycle, which is not an end of the world thing unless of course there's something wrong with your motorcycle, but there never is, right?